Hello. Today we're going to uh, go over getting to know the app of Adobe Photoshop. So I'm in 2023 version. And so I'm not sure what version you're using, but let's go and find this tutorial right here. It says, let's take a look at the kind of image you can make in Photoshop as you get to know the interface. This is a beginning uh, tutorial. So I'm going to go over to the home screen right here. And if the internet's working right, you should see something right here where it says browse tutorials. We're going to click on that. We're going to, I'm going to change this here to all categories, all skill levels. Let's go to beginner. And right here it's under orientation and it's get to know the app. So I'm going to click on that, start the tutorial. I'm going to move this over just a little bit like this. Keep this here. Okay. So right here we see in this panel right here, if you're trying to get to this panel, you can get here by going to Window, Workspace, Photography, and it should kind of set it up beginning steps. You, there's a lot of things you can close out, uh, but we won't go over that so much right now. So this is the Layers panel right here. It's one of many panels you'll use as you work in Photoshop. Let's see how you would work with the layers panel to edit this image. Click next to continue. So I'm just reading the, the tutorial part here from Adobe. So let's click next right here. And right here it says to make designing flexible, you can turn layers on and off. How might the image look with a planet in the background? Click the empty box to the left of the planet layer to turn on the layer planet. So right here, this layer right here is turned off. So I'm going to click right here. There's a little box right there where we see an eye over here on this layer, uh, right here next to the planet when I'm going to click that. And now we see the moon up here. And the planet layer is now visible in the image, but it appears on top of the giraffe. So you can kind of see how it, the giraffe is lighter right here because it's actually on top of the giraffe. And it's also on top of the trees. So see these trees are kind of lighter. We can fix that by changing the order of the layers in the layers panel. Click next to continue. Click next right there. And now this actually is planet. I thought it was moon, but it says planet. So we're actually going to drag the planet layer below the waterfall layer. Release when you see a blue line under the waterfall layer. Click next to continue. So I'm just going to drag this going to click on it and drag underneath the waterfall and then we see that blue line right there i'm going to let go and now we can see that it went behind the trees and behind the giraffe okay so here's this layer it's the moon we see the giraffe layer we see the waterfall and behind that is the planet layer so just think of it as different layers on top of each other almost like paper so we're going to click next to continue. That looks better. Now the planet appears behind the giraffe and the trees. Reordering layers in the panel changes the order of the images on the canvas. Click next to continue. So let's click. And right here it says every Photoshop file has at least one layer. Look in the layers panel to see how many layers this file has. So if we want to count them, we see one, two, three, four, five layers. Let's click next. Now it says let's move the moon closer to the giraffe so it looks like he's reaching for the moon. Select the move tool. So right up here is the move tool. Okay. And then it says it's a good habit to first select the layer you need to work on. Click on an empty part of the moon layer to select the layer moon. Because right now we see that the planet layer is selected. So if we use the move, move tool now, the planet's going to move. We don't want to move the planet. We're trying to move the moon closer to the draft. So I need to select the moon layer. And now I can move that, that layer. It says move. Drag the moon down to position it just above the giraffe's head to make it look as if the giraffe is reaching up to the moon. Click next to continue. So we're going to drag this down because I have the move tool selected. I'm going to drag down 
the moon to the giraffe like it's reaching for the moon. Okay. Now I'm going to click next to continue. It says the toolbar home base for your editing tools. Tools are an essential part of any editing workflow. Here are a few tools you'll use all the time. Note, as you're working on this tutorial, if you're asked to select a tool that is already selected, click another tool and then click back on the desired tool. Sometimes, let's say if it wanted us to click that move tool and it was already selected, well, the problem is it won't know we selected it unless we click something and then click back. It has to know uh, that we're doing what it wants us to do. So let's click next. Now it says we don't really need a second moon in the sky, so we'll use a spot healing brush to remove the smaller moon. Click next to continue. So we're going to get rid of this moon by erasing it, but we'll show you how we're going to do that with the spot healing brush. So right here, it says select the spot healing brush. Okay, now I am going to hold down so you can see. Okay, now it says the settings for um, a selected tool are located in the options bar at the top of the screen. Click to open the brush size options. Set the size slider to about 100 px, slightly larger than a moon. Click next to continue. So I already have this size selected, but I'm going to show you how to change the size. It's already one on 100, but let's just put it somewhere else, okay? So now it has 176. We can slide this down to 100, and honestly, if it's roughly 100, it's fine. But let's say we can't quite get it to 100. I can click in here, and I can just change that manually to say 100 if I need it to be exactly 100. So now that it's 100, 100, click next to continue. So see, that's what we're going to be using. That healing brush, that size is important. Click next. It says, we want to remove an object that's on the clouds and the stars layer. So we need to make sure that the layer is selected. Select the layer, clouds and stars. I don't think we want to do that. Okay, so actually, I guess it's on that layer. I didn't realize that. Okay, so that's why we need to collect uh, select this layer, clouds and stars. It's on this layer that we have to remove this moon. So place a circular cursor for the spot healing brush over the small moon and click once to remove it. Click next to continue. So this one time should take care of it and you'll see it will get darker as we select it. There and now I'm going to let go. It covers it the moon completely. And now what it did is it went all the way around it now notice there's a slight, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to zoom in. Notice that there's just a little bit left there. See that? I'm going to actually hit it again because it didn't quite get all of it. There, now it got all of it. So you might have to click twice. Okay. Let's move that over here. Now let's click next to continue. That's all it took, a single click. The magic of the spot healing brush removed the moon and seamlessly blended in the surrounding color and image detail. Click next to continue. Gonna click. So what that great, uh, when you remove that object with that spot healing tool, uh, that they call it Photoshop magic, but you know, with just one click you can remove almost any small object using the Photoshop's retouching tool. It, it's great for when the background is the same, okay? And, it, and it's uniform, okay? Then it works really easy to do that. If the background's all over the place, sometimes it doesn't work quite so well. Okay, so now the background looks a bit too bright for this twilight scene. So let's use an adjustment layer to darken the sky. Click next to continue. Let's click next. So we're gonna make the sky darker with an adjustment layer. So it says click, click the create new adjustment layer icon and choose brightness, contrast, click next to continue. So that's right here. We're gonna look for brightness contrast. We got that. So now we're gonna click next. And it says the controls for an adjustment layer are found in the properties panel. So right here we see properties. 
you can actually make that bigger or smaller. Uh, it says drag the brightness slider to the left about minus 35. So the brightness we're going to bring down, and I was able to change it to minus 35 to slightly darken the clouds and stars layer, click next to continue. So adjustment layer affects only the layers that are below it. So only the clouds and stars layer is darkened by this adjustment. Click next to continue. So right here, you can see the difference of what we did by clicking that little eye. Okay. And only the layers that are underneath it are affected. Let's click next. And that's it. And there you go. That is it. We can, hopefully you're able to use that. And now if you want to save it the way that I save the files for if I'm turning it on, on something online. So if you don't need a big picture for this and you're just turning it in for uh, an assignment or whatever it is, you can go to File, Save a Copy. This is only going to save one layer. So when I go Save a Copy, I'm going to make the file so it's a JPEG so I can't come back to it. Now, if I needed to come back to it, I wouldn't save it as a JPEG. So I'm going to also change this to get to know the app, get to know the app, and then I'm going to put my name. I think that's good practice. I'm going to go on my computer, save on your computer. I'm going to go to downloads. I'm going to change this. Instead of Photoshop file, I'm going to go JPEG. And then I'm going to save. And six, eight is fine for online. That's only if I want one layer. Now see, uh, that will be saved with just one layer. And now if I want to save it as a Photoshop layer, a file so I could have all the layers, I could do it that way too. So I go file, save a copy, and I could go get to know the app. I go save on your computer. I could save it to the cloud too if I want, but I'll go save on your computer. And right here, it's got Photoshop file right there, Photoshop. So I just hit save and then I could come back to it and it would have all these layers. Whereas the JPEG, if I go over in here to downloads right here, this is just got one layer. Okay, so if I open up this one in Photoshop, the JPEG open with Photoshop, See how it only has one layer? So I can't go back and make any changes to it. Whereas if I go over here to the Photoshop file, it has all those layers. Okay. So I'm all done there. That's it. Hope you guys were able to learn something. And until next time.